So that concludes uh, general business. We'll now move to the urgency motion. I inform the Senate that at 8.30 a.m. today, 31 proposals were received in accordance with Standing Order 75. The question of which proposal would be submitted to the Senate was determined by lot. As a result, I inform the Senate that the letter from Senator Reynolds proposing a matter of urgency was chosen. It is shown at item 12 on today's order of business. Is the proposal supported? Thank you. The proposal is supported. I understand that informal arrangements have been made to allocate specific times to each of the speakers in today's debate. With the concurrence of the Senate, I shall ask the clerks to set the clock accordingly, and I call Senator Reynolds. Uh, thank you very much, President. I've moved this uh, urgency motion today as it is very clear to those on this side of the chamber that the dead hand of the train union movement is alive and well not just in the Prime Minister's office, not just uh, in this chamber, on the government benches, in building work sites across this nation, but also in the pockets, in the wallets of Australian superannuation holders. Uh, this is shocking but hardly surprising that the Albanese Labor government has reversed the requirement that we introduced for super funds to disclose. So they have reversed the require requirement for disclosure on how super funds spend, the, spend their super members' funds on sponsorships and payments. No line items, no transparency and no accountability. Absolutely no integrity whatsoever. Service payments are clearly political and they're designed to buy political inter interference and influence. How could they not be? These payments some at least 85 million over the past five years alone from superannuation funds are for things like million dollar footy sponsorships, corporate boxes, union kickbacks and lobbying. This is the money of Australian workers superannuation funds. It is their money. It is the money that they have earned that they have put into their superannuation fund. Australians deserve to know how their retirement income is being spent. The Labor government's amendments, uh, with the encouragement and the persuasion, probably not too hard a persuasion, of the trade union movement, goes against recommendations from both the Productivity Commission and APRA. Well, of course, they, of course it opposes uh, what they wanted, because it is against the best interests of all Australian superannuation holders who unknowingly are having their superannuation funds used for such things. Now, if those officers were actually serious, a modicum of seriousness about transparency, their very first move in government would not have been to support winding back these transparency measures for every Australian worker. The measures that we introduced were designed to let sunlight into the three trillion dollar industry. This is an industry that impacts on the retirement of all Australians. What absolute hypocrisy. On the one hand, you've got Labor government parliamentarians and crossbenchers who ran their campaigns on integrity and trust. And what is the first thing they do? They come into this chamber and move a motion to, to get rid of the regulations that we introduced that provided transparency. They now seek to pass regulations that would hide the disclosure of payments that superannuation fund make. It was their first thing Labor Party did in government. They talk about integrity, but on their first test they failed dismally. In this chamber and on the government benches, we have to always strive for the best when it comes to Australians' hard-earned money. Australians who work hard to make their income putting money aside for their retirement, doing the right thing. The key word here is they do it compulsorily. Australians, by law, if they are working, have to put some money aside for the future. And compulsory savings by ordinary Australians, that has seen the growth of the super industry now to over $3.4 trillion. On the face of it, a fantastic result, because after all, the initial intent and still the intent of superannuation was to take the financial pressure off government or taxpayers by ensuring that Australians can pay or partially pay their way through retirement 
with their own money. Remember this, it is their own money. On this side of uh, the House, when we were in government, we wanted to make sure that members actually saw they had transparency on where uh, their money was going, and we will continue to support that. In stark contrast to the union opposite, opposite, there are three key principles that the coalition MPs will continue to adhere to in relation to superannuation. Firstly, we know it is members' money. We are always committed to fund performance, and we are always committed to transparency and integrity for every single superannuation member. These principles are the bedrock of what we know delivers the best superannuation system. The coalition uh, government's Your Future, Your Super reforms, which were so ably championed by my colleague uh, Senator Jane Hume here in the chamber, were the most significant reforms to superannuation since the introduction of compulsory super in 1992. The name says it all, and it says what we are all about on this side, your future, your super. These reforms ensure that superannuation works in the best financial interest of all Australians and not in the interests of superannuation board members and trade unionists who had corporate tickets at the cost of uh, superannuation members, and they never even knew about it. We did so also supporting superannuation members by removing unnecessary waste by increasing accountability and transparency and providing more flexibility for families and individuals, in particular lower paid Australian women. So critically, when in government, we were all about doing three things in relation to super. Strengthening obligations to ensure trustees only act in the best financial interests of members. Strengthening obligations to ensure that trustees only act in the best financial interests of members. Are these service fees? Are paying for corporate boxes? Are paying money to the trade union movement and to the Labor Party in the best financial interests of Australian superannuation holders? Of course they're not. And that's what we wanted to do to make sure that Australians understood where their superannuation money was going. We also ensured that, union, uh, that uh, superannuation funds provided better information regarding how they manage and spend members' money in advance of annual members' meetings. And thirdly, we provide, looked after their interests through enhanced portfolio holdings disclosure, again all aimed to support the transparency and the management of an individual's funds. Now we learn, as I said, the first thing this Labor government is doing is putting these reforms under attack. Of course, with the dead hand of the trade union movement coming in persistently behind them. Now, of course, this is not something that anyone opposite, and it was not in the Labor Party policy before the last election, that they were going to go ahead and dismantle this transparency. Of course it was not. Now, for a Prime Minister and for crossbench members who campaigned on accountability and integrity, this was the first act of those opposite in government to extinguish transparency on how unions and the ALP access millions and millions and millions of dollars every year of trade union funds. So the first action was to do this. It wasn't to take measures straight away to deal with cost of living pressures on Australian workers, and it was not to take action to actually address workforce challenges or anything else. It was to do the trade union's bidding uh, to hide where superannuation members' funds are going. Staggeringly, there are elements of the superannuation industry who support this watering down of transparency. How can this possibly be? How can this possibly be in the best interests of uh, superannuants to have this expenditure, this self-interested expenditure? for Labor and the unions hidden. And most of all, on this side of the chamber, when we have a look at this issue, we wonder how can this possibly be, not be, I should say, a matter of integrity? Of course it is a matter of integrity. The fact is that you are hiding millions of dollars of expenditure which flows through to trade unions and to the Labor Party. And now they want to do it without disclosure, so people cannot see the benefits that Labor 
and the trade unions are getting from superannuation funds. And you've got to ask why. And again, it is very clear. It is very, very clear. But I think early this month, Michael Rodden in the Financial Review really let the cat out of the bag when he noted that Senator Nick McKim is working alongside the Treasurer to help him hide the disclosure of payments. Yet he tweeted on September the 16th, the Green wants meaningful transparency that tracks the flow of members' money, including for political purposes and profit. What bunkum. It is utter hypocrisy. And if you go on and read that article further, it will see exactly why it was the case. The Hain Royal Commission's exhibit 5-368, the KPMG audit into payments made at to CBUS sponsoring organisations is illuminating. And if any superintendent wants to know where their money is going, look further into this, because shortly Labor will be hiding all of these payments from you. Oh, sorry. Uh Senator Walsh. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. And I rise to speak on the urgency motion as moved by Senator Reynolds. Uh, and I can assure the Chamber that our government is committed to delivering accountability, transparency and good governance in every part of our financial system. And so we welcome this motion today. Uh, but you've really got to ask yourself what is going on with those opposite? Uh, it has only been a matter of months since Australians banished them to the opposition benches and ended their decade of wasted opportunities and messed up priorities. Uh, and they still apparently haven't learnt a thing. They've got nothing to offer Australians. They themselves admitted that we're the opposition, we have no policies. Uh, and instead, they're throwing random bits of mud and trying to see what will stick. Uh, today they're here in this chamber trying to talk about transparency and accountability. Of all things, those opposite talking about transparency and accountability. Of all things, we welcome this motion. We welcome the conversation today because it's pretty rich for those opposite to suddenly claim that transparency and accountability are matters of urgency for you, matters of urgency for those on the opposition benches considering your decade of rot after rot after rot, scandal after scandal, cover-up after cover-up. This motion has come from the people with the former Prime Minister, who was the Minister for Health, the Minister for Finance, the Minister for Industry, Science, Energy and Resources, the Minister for Home Affairs and the Treasurer, all at the same time. I probably miss them, all kept secret from his own ministry and the Australian public as well. So let's talk about transparency and accountability. We welcome it. We welcome it. This is the former government that want to come to this chamber and talk about transparency and accountability. Really, really. So let's be absolutely clear that those opposite have no interest in transparency, no interest in accountability. And they had 10 long, long years to demonstrate that. And this motion uh, has absolutely nothing to do with either anyway. This is just another ploy in the war that those opposite are waging against our proud Labor legacy of superannuation in this country. And what Australians are asking themselves right now is why do the Liberals hate super so much? Is it because it was thought up by the union movement, Senator Hume? Is it because it was made universal by a Labor or, government, or, Senator order, Reynolds? Or, or, order. S excuse me. Excuse me, Senator Walsh. Now, I'm pretty lenient here, Senator Reynolds, but I am going to ask you to withdraw that. I withdraw my apologies. Thank you, Senator Reynolds. Senator Walsh. Uh, thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. Maybe they hate super. Uh, so much because this is a legacy of the union movement, this is a legacy of the Australian Labor Party, or is it just the industry funds, the industry super funds, that you hate on the opposition benches? Uh, and why would that be? Is it, is it because the industry super funds consistently outperform the rest of the sector? 
Is it because you can't stand the idea that workers in a union would have an interest in ensuring their retirement savings are working for them and choose to invest them in an industry super fund? Or is it because industry super funds have dared to invest in nation building projects and infrastructure in this country? Projects that will deliver good, secure jobs for the very workers whose retirement savings are invested. Nation building projects like Star of the South, Australia's first offshore wind farm. Nation building projects uh, like the construction of social and affordable housing, which will also create thousands of jobs as well as drive down the cost of housing and rentals. Those opposite can't see to see these projects funded and they can't see the they can't uh, stand to see the returns that those projects will deliver for members as well. They just can't stand to see the superannuation industry step up and deliver the very things that your government refused to deliver. That's why their former treasurer tried to insert himself into the boardrooms of the super funds. Uh, and that's why they're back here continuing their ideological war on super. This motion has absolutely nothing to do with transparency and accountability. It has absolutely nothing to do with protecting the interests of Superfund members, because those opposite do not care about Superfund members, do not care about Australian workers and their retirement. They definitely don't care about workers' hard-earned retirement savings, because for the last decade on the watch of those opposite, Australian workers have lost $5 billion per year in unpaid superannuation, $5 billion per year missing from the retirement savings of Australian workers, because those opposite sat back and allowed the ATO to take a light-touch approach to dodgy employers, a light-touch approach which has done nothing to stop employers stealing super from their workers. I think the Taxation Commissioner has admitted it himself, Senator Hume. A light-touch approach that's resulted in less than 15 per cent of unpaid super being recovered by the tax office and has shifted the responsibility for chasing unpaid super onto workers themselves. So if forcing workers to do the job of their government agencies wasn't enough, those opposite made that job almost impossible. We know those opposite just sat, sat by when workers tried to get their stolen super back. We know they sat by while workers who reported unpaid super by the ATO were consistently given no information about the progress of their claims. We know they sat by while the ATO kept workers completely in the dark about any deals they made with employers about their hard-earned super. Where was the sense of urgency then? Where was the sense of urgency about transparency and accountability from those opposite then when it came to unpaid super? Where were the Liberal senators coming to the defence of Australian workers or super fund uh, members then? Why did those opposites sit back while $5 billion per year was missing from workers' super accounts? Well, we know why, because those opposite are only moving motions like this one as part of their ideological war on super. But going after the funds isn't enough for those opposite. In their war against super, the Liberal Party are going straight after workers' retirement savings themselves. They want to force workers to raid their retirement savings to buy a house, despite the consequences it will have on driving up house prices. And I will take, I will take your interjection, Senator Scar, about choice. Uh, because during COVID, you did force Australian workers to raid their retirement savings to get through the global pandemic. You said this in the chamber yesterday. You're saying it again today. You're saying that it's a question of giving people a choice. A choice. I am not sure whether you actually understand what a choice is. Because when you champion low wages growth as a deliberate design feature of your economic plan, when you do nothing to drive down housing prices to make them more affordable, when you deny Australian workers access to pandemic support based on the industry they work in, when you leave casual workers, workers in the arts, university workers, off pandemic support because you hate those sectors, when you leave workers with absolutely no support in the middle of a global pandemic, you are not giving them a choice. You are not giving them a choice. You are not helping them to make a choice. What you are doing is forcing them to raid their hard-earned retirement savings because you can't be bothered coming up with policies to actually help them yourself. Almost half a million Australians have their super funds closed or almost completely cleaned out 
of a result, as a result of what you are calling a choice. What you are calling a choice. Thirty-seven billion dollars was taken out of accounts from people who really needed those funds the most, leaving them at absolute ground zero when it comes to retirement security. For those opposite, they don't want to stop there. It's not enough to have workers drain what's already in their accounts. Now coalition senators have even more policy ideas to go after workers' retirement savings. So apparently you do have some policy ideas, uh, Senator Hume, on the back bench. They're suggesting that the government increase taxes on super. They've said the government should not proceed with the legislated increase to the super uh, guarantee. They've called the requirement for employers to pay super, uh, they've called on that to be removed altogether. And most shamefully, they've called for super to not be paid to low income earners at all. If they cared about transparency and accountability, they would own up. Oh, they would no. own up to oh. their hatred of super. Senator, Senator Walsh, Senator Walsh, if you just take your seat for a second, and I'm trying to listen intently, and I understand these conversations can get quite boisterous, but when there's four, three of you who haven't got the softest voices in the Senate, it's starting to hurt my ear. So I would just ask if Senator Walsh, for the remaining 29 cent seconds, can be heard in silence. Thank you, Senator Walsh. If you cared about transparency and accountability, you would own up to the fact that you hate super. You hate Labor's proud super legacy and you hate the industry super funds the well, most. Well, you would be honest with seconds. Australians that you just want to tear the whole system down and that's what this is about. Our world-class superannuation system is a Labor legacy. We will always stand with workers to strengthen it and protect it. We have no interest in being drawn into a war with you on Senator super. Senator Walsh, your time has expired, and I'm sorry the 10 seconds of silence was quite enjoyable there for a while. Senator McKim. Uh, thanks very much, Acting Deputy President. Well, the Senate's being asked to, uh, this afternoon to reaffirm the importance of transparency and accountability in Australia's superannuation sector and to support measures that ensure that superannuation funds provide better information regarding how they manage and spend members' money. Well, the Greens could not agree more with those sentiments. We could not agree more uh, with those sentiments. Now, just after the election, the new uh, Financial Services Minister, Mr Jones, gave uh, what I uh, dare to suggest is a pretty optimistic take on how this new parliament was going to deal uh, broadly with the issue of superannuation. Mr Jones is quoted in the Australian Financial Review as saying this, the spear carriers have left parliament, so, now, uh, so there is now an opportunity to sign a treaty to end the super wars. Well, we here in the Greens very much appreciate that sentiment, but I'm sorry to say uh, to Mr Jones that the end to the super wars is very clearly nowhere in sight, because the opposition has a deep reserve of spear carriers, and they are committed to fighting the super wars. And that, colleagues, is exactly how we find ourselves having this debate today. So this debate, even though it's cloaked in very respectable language and, in fact, language which the Greens totally support and we will support. The question being put, the need for transparency and accountability in superannuation and for measures to ensure that super funds provide better information regarding how they manage and spend members' money. We look forward to supporting that. But this is, of course, in the context of the government's new regulations that establish a set of rules for what information is provided by super funds in their annual member meeting notices. Now, the opposition has put forward this debate today precisely because Senator David Pocock has postponed his motion to disallow these regulations. Now, uh, the fact that it's Senator Pocock's disallowance and not the LNP's disallowance is an incisive insight into the mercenary nature of the spear carriers inside the LNP. Because if the spear carriers inside the LNP were so confident of their case that the new government's regulations should be disallowed and the old regulations 
should stand, why then are they relying on Senator Pocock's good name and reputation to lead the argument for them? Why doesn't the LNP put up its own disallowance? Why doesn't the LNP put up its own disallowance? Now I'm going to answer the question I've just put to the chamber. The reason that the LNP, the opposition, is so keen for Senator Pocock to, to lead the charge in this battle is because the transparency and accountability regime that they put in place, that the LNP put in place when they were the government, was designed to target the unions. It was designed to target industry super funds while going soft on retail for profit super funds. And that's because the LNP is full of spear carriers that want to fight the super wars, and they are also full of spear carriers for whom the very idea that organisations that represent a collective of workers would have access to large amounts of capital is actually hell on earth for the LNP. The idea that working people can have a say on how large amounts of capital are distributed in our society is complete anathema to the LNP. The opposition's idea of transparency and accountability is an itemised account, line by line, of payments by super funds to unions, but nothing whatsoever—and this is the critical part—nothing whatsoever on the payments of dividends or other proceeds for profit by retail super funds to their parent companies. So you want to make the, the super funds declare payments to unions, that's the industry funds, but you, won't, uh, you don't want the retail super funds, the for-profit super funds, to declare uh, their uh, payments, their dividends to their parent company. If you want to talk about hypocrisy, go and take a good look in the mirror. That's all I've got to say to the LNP. The previous government's regulations provide lopsided transparency because, and this is the critical part, they were designed to provide ammunition for those on the side of profit in the super wars. Those regulations were drafted under the Morrison government, a government that was the absolute living embodiment of crony capitalism. And that crony capitalist government spent every day of its existence fighting organised labour as hard as you could and defending the rent seekers as hard as you could. And that is what you are doing when you saddle up Senator Pocock to take the lead in this battle. Well, the Greens are not interested in playing along with the spear carriers in their war on industry super. What we are interested in and what we are working to deliver is meaningful transparency. We want to see an annual super transparency report published by the regulator, APRA, that tables all of the relevant expenditure, including for political purposes and including for profit. And we want that all together in one space. So cross-comparisons can be made by members. Members would get a better understanding of how their super fund rates relative to other funds, and it would enable institutional scrutiny from the media, from NGOs and from parliamentarians on expenditure by super funds and on profit-making by super funds. And that is far more likely to bring about meaningful change than either of the regulations that the LNP want us to choose from. <coughs> so we are in a discussion with the government of, and we hope that we can land in that place which will provide a far more meaningful transparency regime than either the LNP's old regulations or the Labor Party's new Thank ones. Thank you, Senator McKim. Senator Hume. Thank you, Acting Deputy President. I rise to speak on this urgency motion that calls on this chamber to reaffirm the importance of accountability and transparency in Australia's superannuation system. Yeah. It is so disappointing that we have to have a debate like this, on a motion like this, in this very chamber. This chamber, whose primary role is scrutiny, whose primary role is to shine a light in dark corners. You would have thought, indeed the Australian people would expect, that this chamber, no matter which party you are from, would support accountability and transparency in Australia's superannuation system, but no, clearly no. But after all, Australia's superannuation system and the trustees that operate within it, 
They're the custodian of $3.4 trillion of Australia's retirement savings. Now, let me put that into context for you. $3.4 trillion is twice the size of the ASX. It's one and a half times the size of Australia's GDP. It is an enormous money, and yet we allow these enormous companies, these huge, huge organisations, to operate in the dark. Unfortunately, this is not a view that's shared by everyone in the chamber. We in the coalition have always supported transparency and accountability in the superannuation sector because we know that it will deliver choice and better outcomes for Australians if we do. And that's why when we were in government, we implemented a series of reforms that modernised the superannuation system, addressing the two key drivers of poorer outcomes for superannuation members, opacity and underperformance. Our reforms through the, your, the Protecting Your Super legislation and through uh, choice legislation, through to Your Future, Your Super legislation were designed specifically to improve transparency, to allow for better informed choices and greater retirement outcomes for Australians. And it is working. It is working. The Your Future, Your Super reforms were the most significant since the introduction of compulsory super back in 1992, and consolidating 3.5 million accounts, unintended multiple accounts, that were an intentional design feature of the system so that you paid twice as much fees, so that you paid twice as much on administration. It was an intentional design feature. Well, they have diminished dramatically. 3.5 million unintended multiple accounts have now exited the system, making you more money. We banned exit fees. We capped fees on small balances, and we ensured that younger people do not have to pay for insurances that they do not need. That they do not need. We also provided Australian workers with a genuine choice, a real choice. You didn't have to be told by your employer which fund you had to go into. You didn't have to be told by your union. You got to choose which superannuation fund best suited you and your family and your lifestyle for the first time. These measures stopped superannuation balances being eroded by unnecessarily and overly high fees, which over time will save particularly young people now. They will save people that have combined their accounts today tens of thousands of dollars, which will be compounded into the hundreds of thousands in their retirement. Following this, the Your Future, Your Super reforms will save all workers around $17.9 billion over the next 10 years by putting increasing downward pressure on fees, removing unnecessary waste and, most importantly, increasing accountability and transparency of all super funds. Now, unfortunately, the Labor Party and the Greens and the Greens fought us every step of the way on all of this legislation. They were desperate to keep their mates in the industry and particularly in the unions happy at all costs and at the costs of super fund members, at the cost of you. One key element of our reforms was to ensure that super funds had to act in the best financial interest of members. Not the best interest, that morphed. All of a sudden it was in the best interest of members to drive across great bridges or the best interest of members to invest in uh, uh, you know, housing developments in London. No, the best financial interests of members is what it should be the primary purpose of superannuation funds. That, that, uh, unfortunately, next, those opposite are prioritised mates instead of ensuring accountability and transparency for all Australian superannuants. That's why it wasn't surprising, although it was extraordinarily galling, it was extraordinarily brazen, that Stephen Jones, the assistant treasurer in the other place, the first thing he did on coming to government, the very first thing, the number one priority in the treasury portfolio of a brand new government is to wind back transparency and accountability in superannuation. You would have thought, nine years in opposition, you would have had a little bit more to do once you hit the Treasury benches. But no, that's what Labor have prioritised. That was their first order of business. It's shameful. It's shameful. It's brazen. And after all the good work was done, because I will agree, I will agree with Senator Walsh, yes, superannuation was certainly the invention of a Labor government, but by God, it took a coalition government to make it work for members rather than make it work for the funds and for fund managers. He's quickly followed up, the Assistant Treasurer, with a review of the Your Future, Your Super laws, the laws that improved 
member outcomes, that improved performance, that improved transparency, that got rid of the underperforming funds. Now there's a review going on, a secret review, I hear. A secret review. We don't even know who's on this secret review, but I reckon that we can guess. Under the former government's accountability and transparency reform, super funds were required to disclose line by line their expenditure on things like political donations, like marketing, whether they sponsor, super, whether they sponsor football stadiums or football teams. It, they, were required to, to, they were required to disclose payments to industry bodies, including unions, and they were required to disclose interrelated party transactions, this mysterious, amorphous blob. They were required to disclose exactly what that meant. And that's what the Assistant Treasurer has decided to unwind. Now, why is this outrageous? Because superannuation funds are trusts. Every single dollar that a superannuation fund has belongs to a member. It doesn't belong to a big corporate entity. It's not as if they can borrow it. It's your money. It's your money. And they won't tell you how they're spending it. Because for every dollar that they spend, that's one dollar that's gone from your retirement savings. Don't you think that you deserve to know where every dollar of your retirement savings is being spent? That's all we ask. That's all we ask. And yet the first order of business for the Assistant Treasurer, Stephen Jones, is to unwind these reforms. Now, I'm very disappointed in the Greens because it appears that the self-appointed arbiters of transparency in this place, the Australian Greens, are backing the Labor Party. Senator McKim has actually said out loud in this place that the Greens want meaningful transparency that tracks the flow of members' money. Well, the fastest way to do this, Senator McKim, is to commit to supporting the disallowance of the government's watered-down regulations. But he refuses to do that. Senator McKim talks about working with the government to improve accountability while maintaining at the same time that the Australian Greens will not commit this week to supporting a motion on the notice paper to disallow a repeal of these watered-down measures. Senator McKim thinks that the government that's already put its flag well in the sand on this issue and moved to repeal these transparency measures. Senator McKim thinks that the government will suddenly change its tune when the only mechanism in parliament is to, that it has to stop it evaporates. Well, I wish that I had Senator McKim's op, uh, optimism. In fact, I think that's probably the wrong word. I thought perhaps it was naivety, but I think when we heard from Senator McKim before, we realise he's just as captured as those opposite. What a terrible shame for a party that tri prides itself on its ethical behaviour, on its accountability, on its transparency, on its mission for integrity. What a shame, Senator McKim. I do suspect that, this, that the Greens will support this motion. I suspect that they will claim that they do support accountability, that they do support transparency in super in order to deliver those better outcomes. But the proof is always going to be in the pudding. Put your money where your mouth is, Senator McKim. The proof will be how they vote when they get a chance to actually ensure transparency rather than just talk about it. Ensure transparency in super is maintained or removed. So I call on the Australian Greens right now to walk this talk. First, support the motion, but then but then commit to supporting the disallowance motion on the notice paper, and not only that, commit to supporting it today. Commit to supporting it this week. Your reputations depend on it. Senator Stirl. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Madam Acting Deputy President. Now, I'm very happy to speak to the urgency motion moved by the opposition today, and I agree, like uh, most of us on this, or all of us on this side, and, you know, that side, well, they'll speak for themselves. We agree on transparency and accountability in Australia's superannuation sector is extremely important. But those measures must reflect real-world behaviour and be built for the majority of Australians, Australians, not just the chosen few. The motion also goes to the level of information given by super funds to their members and how they spend their members' money. Now, of course, relevant disclosures should be made when required and reporting dates met. 
Members deserve to know where their fees are going and how their money is being managed. That's why we have regulators such as APRA and ASIC that are tasked with overseeing the health of super funds and ensuring governance and accountability. I could also add that we've also had a Financial Services Royal Commission too, that some people have seemed to have forgot about, which was heavily opposed, Madam Acting Deputy President, by the other side until they were dragged kicking and screaming into it. They don't talk about that at all, do they? Now, let's be clear. It wasn't the industry super funds with both worker and employer representatives making decisions in the best interests of members that got touched up by the Banking Royal Commission. No, it wasn't them funds. It was the other side's mates in the big banks and the profit to shareholder super funds that were found to be up to no good. Remember that? We don't hear that coming from that side. But none of us on this side will ever forget that. We've heard a bit in recent weeks from the opposition on this topic of transparency and accountability around super. But let's be clear. This is really just another opportunity to bash super, to bash unions and the huge outcomes delivered for everyday Australian workers. And how do I know? Because I'm a member of a fund and I was signed up in 1987 through the Transport Workers Union, when I remember saying, what am I going to do with $1.87 when I was 27 years old? Thank God for the Transport Workers Union. And thank God for all the unions that have pushed these super funds and done in the best interest for their members that their mates through the banks and all that side, that crony side, <laughs> I'd love to hear their record of what they've done for their members. We saw it last year with the former government's Your Future Super package of changes to super laws. Well, while there were some changes supported by Labor, yes, there were. There was also some ridiculous changes that only increased the admin burden on super funds and did nothing to help the best financial interests of super fund members. The Your Future, Your Super package, which we've heard some squealing about today, was met with a chorus of concern from all sides, including investment managers, actuaries, business groups and, of course, the unions. But the former government would not listen, and the legislation and regulations were flawed. And so it has fallen to this Labor government to fix their mistakes, as in so many other areas. I recall the rushed Senate inquiry last year, where dozens of submissions outlined the concerns with the real-world impacts of the new legislation, and we didn't even get to see the associated regulations until the 11th hour. This was a deliberate attempt by the former government to avoid scrutiny, and despite concerns being raised by bodies such as CPA Australia, Chartered Accountants Australia and New Zealand and the Law Council of Australia, along with almost the entire industry. I'll repeat that, almost the entire industry. So whether deliberate or accidental, certain regulations introduced by the former government as part of their Your Future, Your Super package have acted as a ridiculous admin burden, especially, especially for smaller funds, and proved to be a waste of members' money which required change, which was ultimately led by the industry itself not that side, the industry. In particular, the former government's regulations about annual members' meetings didn't adhere to existing accounting standards and did nothing to improve real-world disclosure for super fund members. In order to improve productivity and the quality of service being provided to the superannuation holders, the superannuation sector, especially the profit to members industry sector of the industry, with a strong track record of actually delivering better returns for members, have supported changes to the annual member meetings regulations, which the minister issued on the 9th of September. But it wasn't just flawed on disclosure regimes that were the former government got it wrong. As senators know, and I've said it before, I come from the transport industry. I am a truckie. Being a transport worker is the most dangerous job an Australian worker can have, and for many workers, the only insurance co coverage that we and our families have is through the insurance attached to our super. That's one of the reasons why it's so important that we have industry and worker voices represented 
in the government's arrangements for super funds, alongside terrible regulations that did nothing to actually provide better real-world disclosure to members, was the former government's aim to override default provisions in agreements with the introduction of stapling. The ability of transport workers to exercise collective choice through collective enterprise agreements has been a key avenue for those workers to ensure superannuation and associated product options that are tailored to their collective needs and maintain vigilance that their interests are protected against practices and fund offerings that testimony before the Financial Services Royal Commission demonstrated might otherwise leave them worse off in the short and long term. Those default provisions once provided a measure of security to both employers and workers for that those workers joining transport employers can be confident they will have superannuation coverage and services that reflect their occupation and industry, even where they neglect to make an active choice. I've heard directly from industry that those changes are leaving people without the coverage they need all for an ideological bent by the former government. But do we hear anything from them about what those workers in the industries, such as transport and construction and agriculture, need? I say no. That is why I'm pleased to reiterate that Labor is committed to delivering accountability, transparency and good governance in every part of our financial system, including in superannuation. That is why we have committed to recommendations of the Hain Royal Commission that expand accountability on banks, superannuation funds and other financial service providers. The Albanese government believes Australians deserve a dignified retirement supported by a strong superannuation system. Our 3.4 million, oh, I'm sorry, 3.4 trillion superannuation system is world class. It's the fourth largest in the world though our economy is the 13th largest. How proud should we be of this? This is an Australian success story against which those opposite have been waging a tireless ideological battle for many, many years, and some continue to do so now. The Albanese government, by contrast, is committed to strengthening the system in the interests of working families. Never forget, this is the same party who in the final hours of the election campaign introduced the policy that would allow first home buyers the ability to borrow 50000 from their superannuation to get into the property market, a policy which was widely condemned for a range of reasons. Furthermore, the regulations the previous government introduced regarding the notice of annual member meetings was clunky and ideologically motivated. Burying super members under mountains of paper riddled with double counting serves no useful purpose. The level of detail previously mandated was excessive and far greater than required by public companies to their shareholders. It is important to have consistency in disclosures wherever possible and to have a level playing field. Furthermore, there was no clear alignment with the Australian Accounting Standards Board or APRA reporting both of which funds currently report under now. This adds unnecessary costs and reduces the efficiency of the system as well as compatibility across public disclosures. It's also created confusion due to a lack of consistency across disclosures made by funds. The aim is to assist members to better understand fund expenditure by the provision of adequate information not confuse them by using different definitions in different public disclosures. Adequate information is designed as information that informs, not overwhelms, and provides useful insights into fund expenditure but does not put funds at a commercial disadvantage by disclosing granular contractual information. Senator Cox. Thank you, uh, Acting Deputy President. Uh, I rise to make my contribution to uh, this matter of urgency. The Greens uh, indeed agree that su the superannuation sector needs more transparency, and you've heard from uh, Senator McKim exactly that Australians should know how their super is being invested. In particular, it should be easily accessible for an individual to find out if their super is being invested in, say, fossil fuels, gambling, tobacco, alcohol, logging, offshore detention, and, and many other industries. 
And we've seen the rise of companies ramping up their policies and commitments regarding environmental and social governance, and it's great to see increasingly more companies starting to own this responsibility and take it seriously, but also acknowledging that they have a lot of power and a huge role to play in relation to uh, what environmental social responsibility looks like. Um, it's also great to see investors taking these factors more seriously too and being more conscious of the industries and companies that they're actually investing in. Uh, we all vote with our money. Every single day we do this, we might not put much thought into that, but with every single dollar we spend, it sends a message to a company that we like them. Um, the products and services that they have to offer, what they stand for and overall. I mean, if we didn't, then why would we spend our hard-earned money there? However, whilst we are seeing this increase on one hand of transparency and accountability, um, we are also seeing some take advantage of that. And they are advertising themselves as being environmentally friendly, taking care of their workers and also having so social licence to operate, particularly in those communities um, that, that they do operate in and having good, diverse accountability and leadership when in fact they absolutely don't. And they're greenwashing and misleading the public and their investors on lots of occasions. Some businesses are taking advantage of investors who are wanting them to do the right thing and making great claims that, without actually embodying them. And this is why we need stronger regulations relating to environmental social governance and, and, and its regulations. It's commonly known as ESG, and the EU has a comprehensive framework that govern ESG, which is formed part of the European Green Deal, in fact. The UK and New Zealand have also taken measures to help regulate ESG. And the primary focus on environmental considerations, which we here at the Greens obviously see this as a priority. Australia, once again, is about five or ten years behind the rest of the world, and, and we can start to elevate this through this process, particularly with the transparency of um, investment uh, and transparency with super funds. And we know there are some frameworks in, here in Australia that people refer to as sustainability that are already in place, but in fact are not strong enough if we are seeing companies continue to, to do this and not talk the talk without walking the walk, in fact, and without it being pro properly, properly regulated and having the power to do that. What we know is fossil fuel companies in Australia um, know that the Australian public wants a climate action and they know they want renewable energy. So what are they doing? They're placing wind turbines and solar panels in their ads. That's what they're doing. It's still continuing to extract coal and gas and cooking our planet. And this is absolutely a marketer's dream, greenwashing, that they are doing. And these ads are obviously curated for that sneaky, uh, convenient purpose to convince the public that this is not actually the issue. And they are not providing that transparency in relation to what super funds are doing. And in the past, we've seen that super uh, funds um, need to make sure uh, the ones that are doing this are already performing better than others who are not, making sure that their governance is che in check, making sure that there is transparency already for investors who are investing in fossil fuels, gambling and weapons. So it's been found that these, uh, this criteria actually helps investors avoid some of the controversy that can be uh, impacting on their stock prices, their investment returns, um, such as you know, one example is BHP's catastrophic oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. So we absolutely need to hold these uh, companies to account and make sure there is transparency in their ESG policies and will not address the climate crisis with companies just simply uh, adjusting their market strategy. We want to make sure that if companies want to uh, do good by the planet and people, then we actually need to create that transparency through a regulated framework. Many of us have seen uh, super invested by these giant companies, and we need to make sure that, it, that when they are making those investments, it's aligned with their priorities, their values, and it's not aiding uh, the burying Thank of the you, truth Senator in relation Cox. to these. Senator Bragg. Thanks very much, Acting uh, Deputy President. Uh, it's uh, regrettable, but uh, necessary to make some comments on this uh, matter of urgency. And um, I mean, I guess effectively this is about the 
compulsory superannuation scheme, which is compulsory, um, and sees about $30 billion a year going out in fees, quite a lot of fees, and um, on a comparative basis would be one of the least efficient and least productive retirement schemes anywhere in the world. Uh, effectively, what you have here is a very reasonable transparency measure whereby at least $15 million in this year is being spent by super funds going into the union coffers and that not being disclosed to members. Now, that figure will balloon to $30 million by the end of the decade. So that's $30 million of retirement savings that is being shoveled to unions that members can't see. And the nub of this issue, and there's been lots of contributions on this issue, is that as a result of these changes in regulations, there's now more transparency on the fund expenditure by visiting the AEC website where the unions are captured and have to disclose their sources of income than there is available to the members of the super funds. So if I'm a member of a super fund and I go to the super fund website, I get less information than I would as a punter going to the AEC website and searching up associated entities and finding the income the unions get from the super funds. I mean, that's, that's how ridiculous this is. So um, effectively, the Labor Party was against these reforms. Uh, the now Minister Stephen Jones wrote 90 letters to the members of the then government urging us not to proceed with our own reforms and pass the Your Future, Your Super changes. Uh, and that's because the vested interests that Mr Jones and the Labor Party are closest to don't want to see these changes because they don't want to see the transparency. They don't want people to see the amount of money that is being distributed from the super funds into the unions. And there's no question that there's been too much politics in super, uh, but I think it's hard to avoid when you've got a system that's been created by the laws of this country and you have allowed such a poorly run structure to operate for 30 years where there is huge leakage. And there is no question that the banks have done a bad job in super. I mean, they have charged ridiculously high fees. They have plundered the retirement savings of their members. Yeah. And the unions have been able to do the same. And they are proceeding with this agenda of taking tens of millions of dollars a year out of the funds and taking it into the unions. Now, one of the funds, which is called First Super, which is a very small fund, is taking $3.5 million a year in director's fees, which is more than a you know, ASX 20 company would be doing on a tiny little super fund. Uh, and of course, some of the first disclosures we've seen under this new regime, including from Australian Super, uh, are now able to conceal more than $100 million in related party transactions uh, and a further million dollars in payments to unions. So we're now not allowed to see any of these payments. These are now a secret uh, brought to you by the party that apparently is arguing in favour of transparency. And I think it is very regrettable. And if the Labor Party is obsessed with the legacies of Paul Keating and all these people from the 1980s, surely if they were genuinely concerned about the longevity uh, and the credibility of the superannuation scheme, they would be embracing the idea of transparency. Because the people that are forced to put their money into this scheme are forced to put their money into this scheme. They have no choice. So the least you can do is show them where the money is going. And if you have concerns about the money going to related parties in other parts of the industry, then make that transparent as well. And I think the issues that the Greens have raised uh, may well be legitimate issues. I mean, maybe there is scope for more transparency. But the bottom line here in this, this debate is that the regulations that were made by the last government that require transparency on payments from super funds to unions or any other related party are credible and should not be removed. And the disallowance that's been proposed by Senator Pocock should be supported by anyone that is wanting to campaign in future on transparency and integrity. Certainly they won't be able to make these arguments if they are not going to support this motion. Thank Goodbye. you. Senator David Pocock. <laughs> Thank you, Acting Deputy President. Clearly, we're hearing from all sides of this chamber that people want more transparency. 
Australians have voted for more transparency, and when it comes to superannuation, we should be pushing for more transparency, not less. According to APRA, we pay some $9.1 billion per annum in fees, but the Grattan Institute points out that many super funds don't report the fees that they pay to companies who help manage their members, number, their members' money. So when you add that, it's more like $30 billion, which is an eye-watering amount of, <laughs> of money. Some big, big numbers. Super consumers have come out saying that they want more transparency. They don't like these changes to the regulations. And to make it clear, that the old regulations apply to both industry and retail funds. Despite claims of high administrative burdens from Minister Jones, Prime Super and Commonwealth Super Corporation both disclosed under the old regs. It didn't seem like a problem for them. And I'd like to address Senator McKim's point earlier. Uh, casting aspersions on my <laughs> disallowance motion. I'm not carrying anybody's spear here. This is something I've heard a lot about from people in the ACT. They want to know where their money is going in superannuation. And <laughs> I think if we put aside the, the partisan nature of this debate, we should be for transparency, regardless of, of where it is. We should be supporting it. And that's why I have a problem with rolling back transparency in superannuation. I haven't been in here for long, just a few months. One of the things I've noticed is that not everyone votes consistently for good policies, and, and often there are votes for politics, which uh, you can understand. And I sort of point to a, a few weeks ago when myself and the rest of the crossbench supported one of Senator Roberts' motions on the climate bill, when all three parties voted against it, because I think politically to support FON um, was not convenient. So I'll certainly be continuing to push for more transparency in super. It's something the people I want to, want rep that I represent want, and it's certainly something that I want to see. Thank you, Senator Pocock. Uh, the question is that the motion moved by Senator Reynolds be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. aye. Those against say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it.